Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're watching this on the interwebs or public access TV. My name is Josh Broca. I'm your host tonight on Around the Lake for the week of February 25th. Joining me here today, to, it's tonight, evening, in between somewhere, uh, we have Mike Nacella on the far end here, the uh, sports editor for the Finger Lakes Community Newspapers. And we're joined tonight by Gary Weisbrot, who is an uh, organizer of the upcoming third annual Finger Lakes Crossword Competition to be held on March 7th. Uh, Gary, welcome to the program. Pleasure to be here. Well, we'd like to thank you for coming. Unfortunately, Mr. Pearl, Adam Pearl of Pastimes, was not able to make it as he was out of town tonight. But uh, our cover story this week uh, was about this upcoming Crossword Competition and also some of sort of well, how kind of crazy this whole crossword thing is. But Gary, I think we'd like to talk right now about why the crossword competition. Well, um, basically, it's, it's a fundraiser for Tompkins Learning Partners, which is an um, adult literacy um, organization. And um, for years, uh, TLP, uh, Tompkins Learning Partners, uh, would have an annual Scrabble contest. And it was very you know, popular, very lucrative. Uh, but it kind of like ran its course, and people were less interested in it. And then a few years ago, um, the movie Wordplay had come out. A documentary. A documentary correct. about um, crossword puzzles and the crossword puzzle contests. And everybody I know does crosswords, you know, at various levels. Uh, I am not a, a very good crossword puzzle solver, but I do them anyway. Um, are you a daily solver or? Um, a daily at the, at the lowest level. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, pretty much. I'll do it every day. Um, I'm what would be considered a Monday New York Times puzzle person. And maybe at some point I'll explain what that means if you're a, a, a puzzle uh, solver. Um, anyway, so uh, we decided that instead of the Scrabble, let's have the, the crossword competition because there is no other crossword competition in the Northeast here in this area. And so we started it about th exactly uh, well, two years ago. So this is the third year. Um, and it's grown each year. And um, as you said, I'll, it's at March 7th. It's going to be at the Boynton Middle School Cafeteria. Um, it's going to go from 2 to 5.30. Um, the actual competition, the crossword, the final crossword competition will start probably around three-ish or so. And I believe that was uh, 45 minutes, you told me? Yes, it'll, it'll run for 45 minutes. But prior to that, there will be other events, uh, contests, music, readings. I mean, basically, literacy is, is our theme. Okay. Um, but it will build to the, the, the final drum roll, please, will be the, the, uh, the, the crossword competition. And um, what's... What's great about um, our uh, crossword competition is, and I, I spoke to Will Shorts, who people are probably familiar with, um, when I first started to put this together. Editor of the uh, New York Times crossword Editor puzzle. of New York Times. Yes. Uh, he's on NPR, and he was the main person in wordplay. Um, and he's the host of the big annual uh, American crossword competition, which takes place either in Brooklyn or Connecticut. I believe it's in Brooklyn yeah. now. It's started and out in Connecticut. For those, yeah. see the difference uh, w w with that particular competition, you've got to be the best. You know, uh, you, you know, you do the, uh, the, the you, you do your crosswords in pen, um, and um, so only the best compete there. What we wanted here was we want everybody to be able to compete. So what we did is we actually have three levels of competition. Okay. Um, what we call the easier, that's me, um, <laughs> uh, which would Monday be a, level. The, which would be the Monday level of New York Times. The uh, trickier, which is the Wednesday level of New York Times, or the toughest, which people think Sunday, but they're wrong. It's not Sunday, it's Thursday or Friday gotcha. of the New York Times. Uh, my mom's gonna be disappointed. Why? She's a Sunday. Well, sun, uh, yeah. uh, well, the Sunday is the, the, the iconic one, and it's also large. It's a large, it's, I believe, it's, 21 by 21. Yeah, it's, instead it's of 15 instead by 15. Instead of by 15 by yeah. 15. So you've got, so anybody can come and compete. That's what's great about it. Uh, the other thing uh, is that we're going to have not only individuals competing, but we're going to have teams. 
competing. Yes. Uh, and when I spoke to Will Shorts about that, he said, ooh, both of those things are going to be problematic. And they have not been. And I think one of the reasons being he's used to the cutthroat crossword competition. The this highest is not, of this the is, high. This is Ithaca, what's that? The highest of the high. Yeah, sure. yeah. This is, this is Ithaca, and uh, <laughs> where everybody gets to a corner and nobody moves because you keep, you know, you know, you go first, you go first. You know, everybody's so nice here. Um, and um, <laughs> so people are competing on teams uh, together. Uh, they're collaborating, and nobody is getting really upset with anybody else who, who beats them. Also, any, not only do you win uh, if you're the first um, perfect puzzle in your particular uh, division, but everybody who within the 45 minutes completes a perfect puzzle will get a uh, certificate of perfect completion so that everybody gets it. Also this year, all the winners are going to get a bracelet Yes, which uh, you were inspired to create those by right, the World Series of Poker, which um, <laughs> in in Vegas nice every touch. year. Yeah, and, and and if you talk to the great poker players, they all say, you know, basically it's how many bracelets have you got? Right. You know, that's, and I expect that somewhere down the road, people are going to say, re referring to crossword, how many crossword bracelets have you got, <laughs> man? You know? um, so. Yeah, if we could just take two steps back and just kind of break this down in layman's terms. So I know how spelling bee competitions work. How does a crossword competition work? Does everyone get the same yeah. crossword and it's first one to finish wins? How, I mean, No, there will be, everybody will start at the same time, but there are three different puzzles. The, 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 the easier, the trickier, right. and the toughest. The teams of those three divisions will be getting the same puzzle as the individuals. So everybody has got 45 minutes. As soon as anybody is done, either a team or an individual, they will hold it up. We'll have monitors uh, who are volunteers from APO, which is a service fraternity up at Cornell. Uh -huh. uh, they'll, they'll hit their stopwatch, and uh, then it'll go to the judges, because the judges will then take a look and make sure everything is answered correctly. There are no blanks left out. Sure. And if there are mistakes or there are blanks, time will be added okay. to it. So you might, you know, when you're done, you might take another moment to t take another look at it. As a matter of fact, at the big one down in, in New York, there was, I mean, which was televised and a thousand people watching, the guy finished and called over the judges and he left a blank. We were like, oops. I mean, he had time to, but he did, and yeah. he lost because of that. Wow. Um, the other thing I really want to underscore that makes our competition different from the other ones around the country is that we are, one of the only, if not the only one, who we have our own puzzle master. When, when I spoke to when I spoke to Will Shorts on the phone, and you know, you're show Mr. Pearl again. Yeah, I believe he said of he he supplies puzzles for twenty or twenty five, perhaps of these a year. Will Shorts does. Yes, yes, and they are actually, which I didn't realize. I, I thought he made them, but what he said is it's actually very little work for me because he provides a times puzzle that hasn't been run yet. It's going to run in a week or two, so he's already got it edited up in the queue. Ready to go. Oh, he's but, got it easy. Yeah, yeah. So he no, basically Adam just makes it four. So these by by Mr. Pearl, they are uh, created specifically for the competition. Three mm -hmm. different puzzles. Right. And uh, and at three different levels of you know that uh, to judge. By the way, that was one of the problems. One of the things that Will Shore said. Well, you know, isn't everybody going to then take the easiest one? I go, no. Again, this uh. is, is the analogy I made in the article is, you know, NBA players don't go to elementary school to, to shoot hoops just to yeah. make everybody look bad. Yeah. You know, no, people, you know, as a matter of fact, and this is like really crazy, everybody, in the past, most people went into the middle. They didn't want to be the beginners, and they didn't want to compete at the highest yeah. level. So everybody was going in the middle. Well, what we did this year is online on our site is we printed three puzzles. TLpartners.org, correct? TLpartners.org. Right. Okay. If you go there. So you go on there and check out, check yourself right. before you TL wreck yourself. TLpartners.org, so. right. And so there are, so what you do is you print out all three and go for it. And which is the one that you felt you're comfortable with? Okay. And that's the one that you'll compete at. Well, what's really weird is so far, most of the registrations have been at the highest level. Oh, wow. Really, which is really cool. That so they'll be going head to head. Maybe I'll just do Monday and win. Right, my exactly. Um. You know, you'll be the ringer. 
Because uh, last I'm, year's I'm winner. I'm about at a money level. Right? We can, we so can face off. Is it just people and their brains, or do they, are they have any resources available to them to help them solve? They can't even bring their brains. No. Okay. Uh, no, no resources at all. No, uh, no actually, no, no electronic Just random devices. scribbling. <laughs> no motor skills. Okay, it's like the infinite monkeys, you know, just filling them in. Uh, no, there's no... So no Google, no dictionary? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. Yeah, yeah. No, sometimes my mom will ask me, "Hey, do you know this?" And I, I'll look it up on Google and just, you know, say, "Yeah, this is it." And you kind of look at it like the, this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she goes, "Oh, you're so smart." You know, that that education well, really it, paid does off. Does it impress her because she doesn't know how to use a smartphone? Well, is that what that, that's that's what it used to be, but now she's had an iPhone for a few years now. So the, the, fact that the, you the gig the, is up. The, the fact that you'll know the capital of Azerbaijan, things like that. Yeah. Even to, even to spell it, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Say it. By the way, the capital is Baku. Um, <laughs> well, then. <laughs> no geography. So, um, no, no. There's no, um, no, no phones, no, um, no devices at all. Um, check them at the door, and um, you know. And then it's like, and it's head to head. Uh, and uh, like I said, you'll have 45 minutes. The winners will probably solve them. Within 20 minutes, wow. you know. Uh, but how uh, many people are on the team? Uh, anything up to four. I mean, okay. all teams will compete against teams, but you can have up to four. Can you just be a one-man team? Then you're an individual. Okay, so there's two. There's, there's individual the, yeah. right. division. There, there will be. Or you could, there will be. Yes. T t um, there will be team. Basically, there will be six. I go like that. Six. Six uh, winners of three individuals and three teams. Got it. Um, and the teams can be, and there have been, just two players. Sure. You know, um, and, uh, and let me say also, and obviously there's a fundraiser, so uh, there, are, you, there are tickets, um, but. Yeah, what, what is the registration? Uh, the registration, uh, I mean, how much is it? Yes. Uh, and I should know this, shouldn't I? <laughs> it's uh, $40 for individuals. Okay. And 150 for a team of four, so you save 10 bucks. All right. <laughs> but I will tell you this right now is we have had a number of sponsors that have wanted to um, uh, contribute, but they didn't want to compete. So they have sponsored individuals and teams. So the money, we have some money there. So if you're a player and you really want to play, um, we have um, spots. Uh, for people to play where they, it, it won't cost them anything. And I'm sure you wouldn't turn away anyone who went out now and found themselves some sponsors. No, I, not at all. <laughs> uh, by the way, speaking of sponsors, since um, is we have a number of underwriters, and can I mention them? Yeah, yeah. sure. Is, Plug away. It's, um, <laughs> the, the underwriters uh, who, who have given us money that, that's, uh, that actually uh, makes uh, it possible for us to put this on. Um, and we've got three of our local banks, which is Chemung Canal Trust, uh, CFCU, and Tompkins Trust Company. Um, we've got uh, Cornell University Press, which I really was glad because I wanted somebody, uh, something to do with literature. So Cornell University Press is I believe one of as part owners. of that, you're also at the competition, before the competition itself on that, that? on that day. Are you still planning on having the, uh, the what, folk music historian? Yes. Uh, Richard Pollenberg, who is a uh, professor emeritus at Cornell, uh, has got a book coming out with Cornell University Press uh, about American um, folk music. Oh. And he's going to be talking about that. And there will be a drawing for 10 signed first editions. Oh, cool. uh, and anybody who's there, is, it, will, it won't cost you anything to do that. We're going to have other things, raffles. I've got a five-gallon jar, oh, right. of pennies, jar of pennies, which I have sure. yet to figure out. How I'm going to get it over there because it weighs a ton. How much money is that? I go, that's the question. <laughs> oh, it's like jelly beans? I, I would tell you. I would tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. Um, Are you going to have the guesswork and then go count it? Like, no, on no. On Monday? I, I will know ahead of time. Okay. So if you pay me enough, I will tell you. Okay. Got to be at least $100. Oh, more. No, no, it's more than that. No, no, no. It's more than that. It's more than how that. How many pennies? It's, uh, it's really having, like I said, is I don't know how I'm going to get it there. Um, and so you'll, people will be guessing that, and then there'll be raffles. Also, we have a silent auction. We have dozens of um, gift certificates, mostly from local restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, but also from uh, a, a gift uh, membership at uh, Island Fitness. Um, and uh, also, you could win a, um, uh, a personalized 
crossword puzzle made by Adam Pearl about you or your family. You give that's them the right. information. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Also, a very cool thing is Will Shorts sent me a tie. It's a really, depending on your taste, beautiful gr or disgusting a crossword <laughs> tie signed by Will Shorts. I'm sure it would have looked lovely with this pattern. It would go, it, with this you know, it would, it would go perfectly with that jacket there. Um, let me quickly, I just wanted to mention two other sponsors. It's like the Oscars. <laughs> just, I got so many people to thank. You know. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not done yet. Get, get the hook. Um, the music comes out. We have a anonymous underwriter who is who gave a very generous uh, pledge uh, in the name of Planned Parenthood. Okay. And finally is our media sponsor. You might have heard of these people. Who? Ithaca Times. Oh, uh, is that who yes. It was? Yeah. Um, and they have been uh, both very generous with the um, publicity um, and uh, twenty five hundred words worth. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there's a great article here, actually. Um, Written by, what's his name? Handsome fellow over there. Actually, and yeah, I wanted to kind of <laughs> get the, um, back in that direction. I had some questions for Josh. Um, Josh, you mentioned when you began this article, you didn't know quite what you were, you didn't know the topic of well, crosswords I knew, I knew could nothing. be yeah. so um, vast. So what was kind of the most interesting or surprising thing you kind of discovered researching well, there, this? There were a couple angles that really fascinated me. Um, First off, I think you mentioned it because, Gary, you and I, you were the first one I spoke to for this article, so kind of getting the baseline. And when you called uh, Michael Short, a.k.a. Rex Parker, the blogger out of Binghamton, who will be there Saturday. Michael Sharp. Michael, Michael Sharp. Michael sorry. Sharp. Yes. Um, I believe uh, he called him a curmudgeon, affectionately. <laughs> and uh, I read his blog, and he blogs. He does it NYT crossword every day. It's what it calls Rex Parker, his pseudonym. Does the NYT crossword? And he'll be, by the way, he will be yes, he will. at the at the competition. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to meet him because he, but but he uh, he uh, does take critiquing the daily crossword pretty seriously. So, and I thought it interesting, and I printed this that Short said on the phone. I haven't really been reading it because the tone seemed a little <laughs> negative and uh, sharp for his part really isn't apologetic, it's just like once, it's a craft thing, you know, like anyone else who gets really into, I don't know, throw an example out of a subculture that people have found themselves on the internet, like they, they kind of get to talking very detailed shop things. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, that but was. Didn't Will Short say that he actually did read it for For years? a while, yeah. I, I think like Sharp years. has been blogging since like 06, uh -huh. you know, a number of these bloggers, I mean, there's other bloggers out there. Um, so yeah, the fact that there was this kind of community that kind of shooting stuff back and forth. I think if you ever see the movie Wordplay, you will see it. It's, it reminds you a little bit of a Star Trek convention feel <laughs> to it. You know, uh, <laughs> I'm sure there's a crossover. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I mean, there there is a, co a crossword community, uh, except that you know a lot of very famous people. You know, mm -hmm. in that movie, you know, uh, Bill Clinton and John Stewart were, were part of that film also. Uh, but Mike Messino of Montoursville, Pennsylvania, um, former Yankees and Orioles pitcher, oh, yeah. also <laughs> showed up. Um, Josh, before you had mentioned the term puzzle master, and I kind of wanted you to explain, what, is, it, is that like a chess master, or is it, is it a term <laughs> thrown around loosely? Or is I was kind of using it as a synonym for, yeah, someone who's just is really, okay, so really so good. Okay, so it's something that... Um, I'm not sure if there's a technical designation that the American crossword... Okay, that's what I was wondering. I, I didn't know if that was something that you just no, I, used to... I honestly, yeah. I was just looking for synonyms. Guys so, who are really good at these... Crossworders, yeah. uh, <laughs> like lots of things that were underlined by Open Office um, as I was working on the article. <laughs> like trying well, to... What about the, the people who make them are called... Crucial verbalists. Oh, I forgot about that. That's right. I forgot that's, about that. I think what, Adam did tell me that. Well, I had used it in, in, in one of our promotions, and Adam Yeah, said, I should have used that. No one's going to know what you're talking about. You know, crucial verbalists, you know, the people who create. Yeah, I was uh, using, a, I was just saying crossword constructor, yeah. or, you know, puzzle maker, basically. And that's, like, when I talked to Schwartz on the phone, that's all he called them. So, I mean, did you talk to some, some of these guys who actually make the puzzles? Well, I, I talked to Adam here locally. So he okay. kind of, yeah, laid out the, the bones of what you do. Um, and, yeah, like what makes a 
good well, everyone's, everyone's got their, one of the hang-ups I wrote a lot about in the article that came up a lot is uh, fill, which are, you have theme puzzles, like in the times they're Monday through Friday, the weekends are themeless. But you have these long words or phrases, and you have to connect them, that's the fill. So three, four, five letter words. And uh, if you do a lot of crosswords, I guess, uh, you get to know some of these certain old, what they call crosswordies, these sort of theme words fairly uh, fairly well. Uh, I can't even say it. A twi, a twi, it's a little sewing case in French. And it's just a weird combination of letters that you can connect things with. So like the bloggers who are a little maybe snarkier about it, uh, you know, sharp, uh, sharp for one, uh, are always, oh, this, that's just boring, Phil. Uh, so, so that's one thing. Um, well, one of the things they say is, like, like any other skill, the more, I mean, you can become a better crossword, a puzzle solver, um, by practice. Part of it is to get into the, the, the mindset. But mm -hmm. I think the other part of it is because you start to recognize a lot of the words that are used. I mean, every crossword puzzle person knows what the thin man's dog's name is, sure. which is Hesta, because it's used all the time. You know, and um, you know, there are other, especially the three letter words, because they're constantly putting in those the fills. Tricks sure. of the trade. Yeah. Tricks of the trade, exactly. And that's one thing that was talked about a lot uh, with the uh, shorts since he came to the Times in 93. Uh, there's, he's allowed a lot more pop culture stuff into the idiom, a lot more just, you know, something m and m rather than yeah. you know a French sewing case, <laughs> so that's uh cool definitely and then there's more to it it's, yeah. it's well ridiculous. we have um, a couple minutes left, so Gary, your last chance to tell people what this event on March seventh is well, all going to be if, if I only have a, a, a minute left, I really want to underscore the uh, the importance of um, the agency Tompkins learning partners. Um, it's an incredible, I mean, it deals with um, uh, adult literacy, uh, 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 English as a second language, and incarcerated youth, uh, and teaching now, them all how to read. And that's a uh, Tom, TLP, Tompkins Learning Partners, is a local agency, it's a not-for-profit, um, and you know, that is what this is all going to support. You know, and I really, again, I want to underscore, some people might remember Tom, um, uh, literacy volunteers, that was the previous, uh, what, uh, previous what iteration. Yes, okay. it is now Tompkins Learning Partners, but it's a it's a great and, agency. And if people want to get involved with the agency, what's the best way for them to go to the same website, uh, tlpartners.org. That will take you to their website. Uh, there's a little crossword uh, <laughs> icon there that'll take you to you know to this. But if you go to their website, you'll find out about uh, the agency. Awesome, great. great. Well, we're going to talk a little bit after all of that talk about words, uh, about creatures that know a few words usually, but not many, and those are dogs. Uh, this week, uh, I wrote about in the Times uh, the fact that among many other changes to Commons le legislation, dogs might finally be legal there for the first time since 1974. Uh, opinions, thoughts? Well, um, what? Where are they in terms of, is this something that most members are supporting, or is it kind of controversial right now? The, uh, the conventional wisdom in City Hall seems, is throwing around this number that business owners and people in general are, have been 50-50 on the dog issue for a long time. And uh, business owners and people who live in the commons have always been able to have a dog, but they need permits. And technically, the dog is only supposed to go directly to the edge of the commons as soon as uh, they leave the doors. Um, but when you go and talk to business owners, anecdotally, um, there's a lot of shrugs, as I wrote. Like, they either don't care, dogs are cool, maybe they don't care for dogs personally, but they see them anyway. And if anyone even cares about any of the commons le legislation that's broken on a regular basis, it's smoking more than dogs. So. So that's sort of a, that, that's part of a larger package of reforms that's proposed right. in front of council on their next meeting, March 4th, right. so. Well, yeah, uh, being a dog person myself and having a dog. Um, oh, do I, you have a dog, Mike? I do have a dog. What uh, color is it? It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a brown, 
a fawn boxer. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I would definitely be in favor of that. I would love to take him down to the comments sometimes uh, if I ever had the chance. But um, Gary, you live in the city. What are your thoughts on dogs being allowed to frolic? Um, I think they should be allowed. Um, it's not something that I would, you know, picket uh, City Hall about. But um, <laughs> I think they should. Uh, I just think that you really need to enforce common sense. Why don't people, I, I can think of two good reasons why people don't want dogs there. Either because of their waste material. Supposedly there are going to be dispensers. Okay. Uh, sort of and the available. possibility of, of, of somebody getting bitten or something like sure. that. So it just seems to me common sense. I mean, because we walk dogs down the street and they can't, you know, um, I can't think of a proper euphemism right now. Uh, that can't be cut out um, on, on, the, on the sidewalk. Uh, they can't bite people. Um, and I think that it would, they would just have to be uh, enforcement. Mm -hmm. But I think that this is a, I mean, this is a pet and dog friendly town. Uh, and it just seems a little bit weird that there's all of a sudden this in subscribed area that we can't go on there. And that there are people that can business owners or people yeah. that are living there. So, uh, and like you said, if you see somebody with a dog, the cop can pull them over and say, can I see your permit? Doesn't make any sense. I think that's part of the rationale is that uh, it gives it a, it's more clarity for, uh, for police and mm -hmm. other enforcement to figure things out. So, well anyway, with that little bit of newsy news, uh, we'll close it out for this week with uh, Mike Nacella of the Finger Lakes Community Newspapers and Gary Weisbrot of Tom's Tompkins Learning Partners. I'm Josh Brokaw, and thank you for going around the lake with us this week. See you next time.